Hey guys, back again with a review of Inferno. And look at that ass. Why? Yeah. Anyway, this is the Arrow release, which the right to review I'm happy I kept. Because it's a rare slipcase edition. It's got four artworks, two discs, and it's got some beautiful art cards inside. Look at that. Yep, this costs a fortune now to get, sadly. But I'm glad I kept mine. So anyway, the film is so bloody good. It's one of those films, when Pilgrim goes with Italian cinema, it's most of the time the film won't have a good plot in it, and it won't really follow the plot, but it does set very well. It'll go all over the place and then end up where it was meant to be. And it's meant to be confusing. Because I've watched a lot of Italian horror movies and they're all very confusing. They don't make sense half the time, but they're still incredible movies, like Inferno. One of the things I like about the film most is the lighting. The lighting and the colours. See, Suspiria is full of red and colours. It's a very colourful film. And Inferno is even more colourful. It's got blue, green, yellow, pink and blue. I can see a rainbow too, but yeah, so it has, it has a lot of that in it, I mean, it shocks me when it comes to how beautiful the film was, so I'm going to try, and I'm going to try and describe the movie, because as much as I enjoy the movie, I've seen it twice, it can be a little bit confusing, so uh, bear with me, so basically the film starts off with Rose Elliot. And she's a poet who lives in a brown house. Yeah, it sounds exciting, doesn't it? And she's reading a book about the three mothers. Now, I wrote this down because I wanted to quote the film, like it said, because otherwise I'd have got a little bit confused. So bear with me while I read this. Basically, she learns that her home is one of the three houses that Varelli built to contain the three mothers of whispers, tears and darkness. Diabolical sorceresses who rule the world with sorrow, tears and darkness. Master Suspirium, that's got, that's got to do with Suspiria, surely. Rolls in Freiburg, Germany. Mata La Crumba, the most beautiful, dominates Rome. Now, I've seen Mother of Tears, the 2007 one, which came 27 years after this movie. And it's a wreck. It's absolutely crap. Don't watch it. Don't buy it. That's Mother of Tears. Don't buy it. Anyway, dominates Rome with well, Mata... Denaborum, the youngest and coolest, resides in Rose's house. Alarmed by discovering the building cellar, Rose writes to her brother Mark, a music student in Rome, when Mark travels to New York, concerned by his sister's safety. After an interrupted phone call, he finds that she has vanished. Okay. So basically what happens is she reads the book, and she goes to a shop to talk to the shop owner about the book. And somehow she goes over this water, and she goes down to the cellar because it says that she, you have to go to find the key down below. So she goes down below and she drops her keys into this water. Now this is the beginning of the film. And this is where the beautifulness of the film's cinematography and lighting is incredible. So she goes down and the keys are dropped in. She puts her hand in to try and get the keys and she can't. So what does she do? Like any person who comes across water, which obviously has a lot of crap in it and a lot of rubbish. And even though it looks purely clean, even though it's got like uh, bottom bits of wood and stuff in it. She decides to climb in. So she goes down, she knocks the keys off further down, goes all the way down. A door opens and these bo dead bodies come basically moving towards her. They're dead. They're not moving. They're kind of just, you know, floating. So she's like... And she climbs out. So basically then you kind of get the sense that someone's watching her. Because you see somebody pick something up with black gloves. Which reminds you a lot of uh, the Galio films where they have black gloves on and that, you know. So basically she contacts Mark. And somehow Mark's girlfriend and her friend end up getting killed. And his sister gets killed pretty gruesomely. And then he turns up. And basically, he's on a journey of self-discovery of who killed his sister. And where is his sister? Like, he wants to find where his sister is. And that's where he meets 
Let me get this right. I know the actress, but I don't know the name. Let's get this right. This is where we met Elsa Stone Van Alda. And they kind of spend a lot of time together. And then she gets killed. And everybody else in the movie slowly but surely gets killed. And it's an interesting movie because you meet, uh, you meet this elderly man in a wheelchair who's got a nurse. And the nurse is very polite and very nice to him, but there's something off about her. And there's another woman here that's a bit weird as well. She's a bit creepy. So all these weird things start happening, and, there's, and that's where I'm going to leave it, really, with kind of thing. But I'm going to fast forward. I'm going to go through a few scenes I really liked. And I'm going to talk about the ending. So I don't spoil the whole film. So one of the scenes I liked was when. The cats were being thrown. At Elsa. Elsa and you could see the people's hands. On the screen. So they were being thrown. Real cats. Thrown at a woman's head. That's right. Ah. No. There he is. Look, this is one of them right here. There he is. Look. Let's see. Oh. It woke up. Look. It woke up. She's angry. So, uh, basically, she falls on the floor. But one of the funny things in this film is there's some of the cats get stuck on the back of her clothes. So as they're editing it, and as they find more cats, you see cats go like this. Like they're and meowing, like they're having a fit, which is really funny. There's another scene where a bloke grabs hold of the cat, especially the head on the side, throws it in a uh, bag, full of other cats, takes it to the water to drown the cats. That's not the funny bit. I'm not that sick. And he drowns them. He's like, ha, 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 ha. And there's a butcher in the, you know, butcher van. And then the bloke falls over. It's crippled and he falls over. And these rats start biting him and I guess eating him. So he's like, help me, help me. And the butcher sees him, runs out of the thing, pulls his hat off. And this is what I thought, here comes Popeye the sailor man. Or Popeye the butcher man. So he's running with his knife, and you're like, he's going to save him. What's he going to do? And he stabs the guy in the back of the neck like this. And he kills him. And it's not explained why he does it. But I'm guessing because the moon goes black. So I'm guessing it's got to do with the evil. But that was an interesting scene. Now, one of the things I didn't like was the ending. It was a bit weird to me. The top thing about the last 30 minutes for me is the music. Do, 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 do. No, it's not like that. It's do, do. It's not like that. You know the song. Look up the trailer. If you want to hear the, if you want to hear the tune, or like the soundtrack, look at the trailer because it's epically cool. And um, so he basically ends up under the building because the building's on fire. Because a woman stupidly sees a curtain on fire, yanks it down, falls on top of her, and burns her to death. But we can't do that, can we? We, you know, you got to be silly and kill yourself. So Mark gets underground. He makes, sees the bloke in a wheelchair, the old guy, and Professor Arnold. And the, the nurse walks out of the room, and Arnold sees him. He says, "Come over here, Mark. Come over here." So he gets close and he stabs him with an injection. And you're like, "Oh, oh!" So Mark basically pushes him. And he's like, trying to get the poison out. And Professor Arnold is like, because he's got this wire thing that connects to this sound machine that goes around his neck so he can talk. So Mark basically grabs hold of him and helps him up. It turns out that he is Dr. Varelli, the guy who created the three houses for the mothers. And he goes on about how she's the mother of shadows. And she's the cruelest of them all. And they're like, oh, there's going to be a real bad show down here. The nurse is the cruelest and the most disturbing of all. So you're like, so they're going, oh, no. Oh, no, what's going to happen? Oh, 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 you're in trouble now, Mark. So Mark walks through, like, which looks like this part from which was in Doctor No, where he goes through this thing and this is all this brickwork, not brickwork, all this, like, rubble. And you're like... So I guess though, there's a lady kind of lying on the table like this. She opens up and she goes, hello, Mark. And he goes, you were looking for me, weren't you? Just like your sister was. You're not going back. There's many phases you've got to go through before you're changed. And they're sitting there going, okay. And then all of a sudden she vanishes and she's in the mirror. 
right? And she's like this at him. And he's getting really creeped out because the place is on fire. And then she comes smashing through the mirror. And it's the most horrible skeleton like costume ever. Got like this hood thing up. And it's like, and it's, oh, it's awful. But, you know, what's the 80s? We can't blame it. It could have been a lot better, but I heard it was made on the day that they filmed it. So that explains a lot. So, what does Mark do? He runs. And the mother dies because she gets because the place burns down. Which, to be honest, I thought it was very, very anticlimactic. I thought it was very like... Uh, uh. But there is a great atmosphere to this film. The music, the acting, there's a great atmosphere through the whole film. There's this whole sense that there's something dark just behind you. Like just gently tapping you on the shoulder, waiting for you to turn around so I can jump at you. That's what it feels like, this movie. It's very dark, it's very gritty, but it's very, very beautiful at the same time. It's a beautiful film. The story does make sense and doesn't make sense at the same time. It goes back and forth like, why would this person kill this person? Why is this person doing this? The character development isn't very strong, but it really is in Italian films like this from the 80s and that. It's more about what they can do on the screen more than who they are. So, yeah, I uh, I highly recommend it. I recommend if you haven't seen Inferno, you should give it a watch. But I recommend watching Suspiria first. Because Suspiria is like the first one in the Mother's Trilogy. Watch Suspiria, then watch this, then skip Mother of Tears. Because after you've watched that, you'll be like, why did I bother investing? I mean, this came like three years after... Suspiria. So why did they make the third film 27 years later? It's just ridiculous. People asked for years and years and years for him to do it. And he finally did it and he ruined the movie. So anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Oh, yeah, I didn't say who started it, did I? Lee McCluskey, Irene Miracle, Ilona Diori, Daria Nicolodi, Nickelodeon, Sasha Pitiff. Alida Valley, Veronica Lazar, Gabriella Lavia, Theodore Chaplin Jr. Probably related to thingy. And it was directed, it was written and directed by Dario Argento, one of my favourite directors of all time. Tenebrae, Deep Red, Cat O' Nine Tells, Four Flies from Grey Velvet, Bird with the Crystal Plumage, and so forth. Sleepless. Card player, that horrible film, Galio. Ugh. Anyway, so as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you haven't, please subscribe and take care. Thanks for watching, guys.